Let's look at some worked examples of how to enter transactions into Ledger accounts. So this video is going to go for a bit. So remember to pause it and stop it, rewind it, and just absorb it one little bit at a time. So the first thing is we're going to start with some opening balances. There's a previous video you might want to watch which says how to enter opening balances, but we've got bank. So that would be banks are an asset. Assets have debit balances. So that would go there. We'd write the first of Jan and we'd write balance. 25,000 if you're confused why go and see the previous video on opening balances we've got accounts receivable accounts receivable is an asset assets have debit balances so we'll write first of Jan balance 50,000 on the debit side we've got accounts payable that's a liability so liabilities have credit balances so we write first of Jan balance and 30,000 just a reminder with opening balances we're not actually cross-referencing another account here I'm just writing the word balance to tell the person reading it that these this is the opening balance Next one, I had a loan. A loan is a liability, so that will be a credit balance too. So we do 1st of Jan, balance 10,000. And lastly, we had capital, which is owner's equity, and owner's equity goes up on the credit side. So that would be a credit balance. And the main thing here is, do our debits equal our credit? So I've got 25,000 and 50,000 of debits, that's 75,000. And then with my credits, I've got 30, 10, and 35. That's also $75,000. So, so far, so good. So. The video for opening balances said most questions we get, it's not like the business didn't exist before we sort of started the question. It usually does exist. In this case, it does. And it has some opening balances and we've entered those. And the point now is we can enter some transactions. So we've learned how to do this in tables. So we're going to start with that. And then we're going to transfer those tables into ledgers. So the first one is the owner contributed another $25,000 to the business. So the business, uh, from the business's perspective, remember the business and the owner are separate entities. It's got more cash which is an asset, so that's going up. So the rule says assets go up on the debit side. If you're confused about the rules of debits and credits, I'll put a link to the video for the summary of that, and you can go and watch that, it takes two minutes. Then we've got what else? Well, the capital of the business, which is an owner's equity account, that increased as well. And an increase for owner's equity goes on the credit side, so there we go. But we're actually in our course, we don't do these tables. These aren't like a thing that's ever going to be in a sack or an exam. Um, these are just for learning. So what we're going to do now is put them in this ledger. So here's our ledgers as they are. Cash has a balance of 25. Capital has a balance of 35. So now we've got to post that down here. So I'm going to start with the date. Then I'm going to put the amount. You can do it in whatever order you want. This is just the way I do it. Um, so like, see, I've left, it, left this cross-reference blank. That's just how I do it. I do that last. But up to you. The reason why I do it last hopefully will become evident in a second because now I'm going to go down here and do the date and the credit here for capital. So we can see cash, debit, there we go, capital, credit. Cool. Now the reason why I do the cross reference last is because now I can reference it and go, well, cash. Cash is a debit. Where will I find the credit? I will find it in a ledger called capital. And I'm going to put capital there. And likewise, here in capital, I'm going to put the cross reference as cash. Where would I find the partner to this credit? I would find it in a ledger here, and that ledger is called cash. Done. All right, on the second, the business took out a loan for $10,000. So to put that in this table, the business has an asset called cash. It's gone up because it's gone and got more money. When an asset goes up, that's a debit. We also have, though, something called a loan. A loan is a liability, and when we borrow money, that liability goes up. And when a liability goes up, that's going to be a credit. We've got to put that in here. So now we can see the cash ledger actually has two items in it already. So now we've got the loan here with an opening balance. So the first one I'm going to do, January 2nd, I'm going to do the date. And in cash, I'm going to do a debit. So that's this bit here. And loan, I'm going to do the date. And then I'm going to put a credit of 10000 Then I'll do my referencing. So in the cash ledger, what is the name of... So this is a debit. What is the name of the account with the credit in it? It is this one here called loan. And in loan, here's the credit. What is the name of the ledger where you will find the matching debit to this? It is called cash. Done. Okay, on January 3rd, purchased a computer for cash for $3,000. So, there is a new asset called computer. It's increasing because I've got a new computer. When an asset goes up, that's a debit. But to pay for it, I had to use cash. Cash is an asset, and because I'm paying money, that asset is going down, and when an asset goes down, that's a credit. So we've got to get that into here. So the first one is, like I said, I always do the debits first, but it's completely irrelevant. You do them in whatever order you want. So the first thing I do is I put the date. I'm going to do the debit in computer here. Computer, debit. The date, debit. 
then I'm going to go to cash, I'm going to do the date, and the credit. Cool. Now I put in my references. So I'm going to go to computer. What is the cross reference? Where will I find the matching credit to this? I'll find it in a ledger called cash. And in cash, where will I find the 3000 here? So this is a credit. Where will I find the debit? I'll find it in a ledger called computer. January 4th. So I took out that loan. Now I'm making a loan repayment. So my loan account, which is a liability, is decreasing. I don't owe as much. So if my liability is, uh, my loan is de decreasing in the amount I owe, the liability is decreasing. And what that means is that's a debit here into a liability. To pay that loan, I had to give up cash. So cash is an asset and it's decreasing. And the rule says that should be a credit. Let's go and put that in here. So we've got the cash asset here, the loan uh, liability here. I'm going to start with the debit again. Put the date, January 4th. And it says here, go to loan, do a debit of 500. Then I'm going to go to cash, January 4th, and do a credit. Cross references in the loan ledger. What or where will I find the matching uh, credit to this particular transaction? I'll find it in a ledger called cash. And likewise over here, where will I find the partner to this one? It's in a ledger called loan. January 5th, purchase $2,000 of inventory on credit. So I've got an asset called inventory that's increasing. When an asset increases, that's a debit. Then I've got something called accounts payable. That's a liability. So when I buy something on credit uh, inventory, that increases my accounts payable liability. So it's a liability going up. When a liability goes up, the rules say that should be a credit. Cool. Let's put that in here. So inventory is blank at the moment. So I'm going to go in there on January 5th, put the date, and I'm going to put a debit of 2000 And in accounts payable, it says go on January 5th, put in a credit of 2000 Let's do our referencing. So under cross-reference for inventory, I'm going to write accounts payable. So there's the debit. I will find the credit to that in a ledger called accounts payable. And then likewise here, where will I find the matching credit, uh, sorry, debit to this? I will find it in a ledger called inventory. So now we're going to deal with ones where they get a little more complicated. We're going to deal with a sale. Now there's no GST on this. We need to add GST. We're going to do that in the next chapter. But for now, we're just going to say there's a sale for cash of a thousand and a cost of sale of 600. So there's a video we learn when we learn debits and credits or revenues and expenses as to what this cost of sale is. So go and watch that in case you're uh, confused. So the first thing that happens is I've got an asset called cash. I've made a sale, so it's going to increase by $1,000. When an asset increases, that's a debit. Why did my cash increase? Because I made a sale. A sale is a revenue and it is increasing. And the rule says when a revenue increases, that should be a credit. So I've got one debit matches with one credit. However, I incur an expense called cost of sales. So my expense is increasing. I could not sell these goods for $1,000 unless I bought them earlier um, for, in this case, 600. So my expense today is 600. When an expense goes up, that's a debit. And what did I actually have to give up? I had to give up an asset called inventory. So I had to give up so or decrease inventory by $600 in order to make this sale. So when an asset goes down, that's a credit. So it looks pretty complicated, but it's still just the same thing. I'm going to go to cash and make a debit on January 6th here of a thousand. Then I'm going to go to sales and make a credit on January 6th of a thousand. And now the important thing here is to treat this as kind of two separate transactions. So when I do my referencing here, this thousand dollars references this thousand dollars. It's got nothing to do with this 600. So we kind of keep them separate. So here I'm going to say cash. That's a debit. I will find the credit here in a ledger called sales and in sales I will say I will find the matching debit to that in a ledger called cash. So it's kind of like a mini transaction this one on its own. Then I better deal with this cost of sales part. So I'm going to go on January 6th and do a debit to cost of sales and then I'm going to go to inventory on January 6th and do a credit of $600. And again the referencing is separate. So this $600 is separate to this thousand. So I'm going to go into cost of sales. I'm going to say here I will find the credit to that in a ledger called inventory. And here I will write the, I'll say this is the credit. I will find the debit to it in a, in a ledger called cost of sales. All right, one more. Wages of $3,000 was paid for with cash. Wages are an expense. And when I pay wages that means my expense is increasing. When an expense goes up, that's a debit. 
well, how did I pay for these wages? I had to give up cash. Cash is an asset. And when I pay cash, it's decreasing. And the rule says when a uh, asset decreases, that's a credit. So I've got to put that in here. So the first thing is I'm going to go to wages and do a debit on January 7th of $3,000. And then I'm going to go to cash on the 7th and do a credit of $3,000. Let's reference them up. So we've got here wages. Uh, where will I find the matching credit to this? I'll find it here in a ledger called cash. And likewise here. I will find the matching debit to this and a ledger called wages. And that's enough transactions for now. Obviously, we've got to do hundreds of different types of transactions, but the fundamentals are the same. We're just doing debits and credits with a date, a cross-reference, and an amount.